Hello everybody, welcome to today's video. In this episode, we are going to talk about five important business stories that happened in 2023. Now, the objective of this video is pretty straightforward. To make sure that you are aware about these important business stories and you sound a little more intelligent when you are having a conversation about these stories, including in your interviews. Well, I believe there is a very high possibility that at least one of these topics would be touched upon in every single interview. And before we get started, please go ahead, click on that like button, subscribe to the channel, gives me a lot of motivation to continue doing what I'm doing. Also, a quick reminder, I'm not going to delve very deep into each one of these business stories. I'll give you respective links to the videos that I have made over the last three months. And if you want to go deep into any of these videos, you can always go there. So let's get started with the first story, layoffs. In 2023, first three months itself, there were 150,000 employees who were laid off in the corporate world. Hugely disturbing number. And big names were out there. For example, Accenture laid off close to 19,000 employees. Amazon, 28,000 employees. Meta, 10,000. Salesforce, 8,000. Goldman Sachs, 3,000. All the big names were out there. To think about it, the most important thing that we need to learn is about why. Why did these companies lay off so many people? Multitude of reasons. There are a lot of reasons, but let's start with the first one, that is Russia-Ukraine war. Because of the war, two things have come out. Number one, the price of oil has increased. Number two, the price of food has increased. When the Russia-Ukraine war kicked off, a lot of Western countries have started putting sanctions on Russia and said that we are not going to use your oil. And when that happened, the oil prices around the world have increased. And also, Ukraine being one of the most important exporters of food grains, when the war started and the supply chains started to break, the food prices around the world have increased. And what does this do? Number one, energy is an input to almost every single industry because it is used in transportation of goods from one location to the point of sale. And when the input cost for every single goods increases, the prices of the goods also increase. Also, the second factor, when the food prices increase, people want to save and spend more on food and reduce their spending on other discretionary items. So you can see that the overall inclination to purchase has started to go down in the market. What happens because of this? The revenues of the organizations will start coming down. And when the revenues come down, the overall expenditure on marketing will go down as well. According to the American Small and Medium Business Administration, companies spend roughly 6 to 12 percent of their overall revenues on marketing. And this is for big companies and for small companies it is 12 to 20 percent. So when the revenues go down, the marketing expenses also go down. And that's the reason why Google, Facebook and other digital marketing companies or companies which are heavily dependent on marketing revenues, they started to struggle. This is one of the very important reasons. The second reason for layoffs is also related to this macroeconomic uncertainties. A lot of companies have put their mergers and acquisitions on hold. Buyers were not certain and sellers were also not certain about the future. When this happens, the middlemen who connect buyers and sellers, investment bankers, they did not have any kind of work. That's the reason why we notice Goldman Sachs has also laid off close to 3000 employees. Now, the third reason is related to over hiring that happened in during the COVID period. We all moved suddenly into the digital world and when COVID slowly going away, we moved back from the digital world to a hybrid world. All the tech companies started hiring a lot more employees, believing that digital is here to stay. So you can see now they have extra capacity and they had to cut off that extra capacity, unfortunately. So these are the three primary reasons, but there are a lot of other reasons. And I'll give you links to different videos in the description box where I'm talking about number one, why layoffs happen in the non-tech world, Number two, why layoffs happen in the tech world? And number three, why certain companies like Apple did not do any kind of layoff? Please do go ahead and check these videos if you are keen to learn more about this business story. Now, let's jump into the second story. All right, now as continuation to the first story itself, 
let's talk about what are some of the mergers and acquisition deals that completed and also that failed in the first three months of 2023. Well, Tata and Bisleri deal was supposed to be a blockbuster deal, but unfortunately it did not go through. Tata spent close to six months monitoring this entire deal and they were in conversations for these six months. The total bid amount was supposed to be around 6,000 to 7,000 crores. Then what happened all of a sudden and why Tata pulled out of these conversations? The first reason, of course, is the total value of the deal itself. Of the 6,000 to 7,000 crores amount bid money, Tata had roughly 3,500 crores in its bank account, which it could directly transfer to Bisleri. But for the remaining 3,500 crores, they had to take a loan. And as we know, in the last six months, the interest rates on the loans have increased by at least two percentage points. What does two percentage mean on 3,500 crores? Roughly 70 crores. And if you add up for 10 year loan amount tenure, you are looking at roughly 700 crores of extra spend just because of incremental interest expense. I'm not even talking about the base interest. It could be 6%, 7%, but because of the increased interest expense, which is now moving from 7% to 9%, Tata had to spend more than 700 crores over a period of 10 years. That could be one of the reasons. The second reason is also this particular business is all about transportation of bottles from the bottling plants to the point of sale place. And as we already discussed, the total price has increased. The cost of energy increased. So the overall profits on these bisleri water bottles has also started to go down. Now, if you take and if you are in Tata's shoes, you will realize that you are spending more and potentially your profits are also less compared to what is happening six months back. Hence, a logical conclusion for them to back out. Now, there is another deal which went through. That is Axis Bank's acquisition of Citibank. Well, it did not acquire the entire Citibank. It only acquired the Indian operations of the city retail bank. And what is it getting for this 11,600 crores? Number one, it is getting the loans division. Number two, the credit cards division. Number three, the retail branches. And number four, the wealth management division of Citibank. Then why did Citibank sell off these kind of assets to access? Number one, Citibank is exiting from these retail operations in not just in India, but also in Russia, Australia and a few other countries. They want to focus more on the investment banking vertical or the asset management vertical, which they are actually pretty strong at. The second thing is also City and a few other international players are starting to exit Indian markets from the last few years, Standard Chartered and a few other companies as well. So it makes sense when they have a buyer who can take out some of their assets and give them a good price, why not? And for Axis, it's a good deal because typically city's customers are having little more wealth compared to their own customers. City's customers have 50% more money in their savings and current accounts compared to Axis customers. Clearly, not all customers are the same. So Axis was looking for that kind of customer base and also City has 1,600 plus corporate connects and these 1,600 plus corporate connections are worth the entire money because when you open a bank account, you typically don't close that bank account. Now imagine about a corporate, once they open a bank account, they are not going to close it. And that's the reason why Axis was interested in City's deal. These were some of the mergers and acquisition news that happened in 2023, first three months. I'm giving you links to both these videos that I have made in the last two months. Please go check out in detail what was happening over there because these kind of questions are super common in majority of the interviews. Now let's jump into the third story. The artificial intelligence wars have already started. Microsoft has ChatGPT and Google has BARD. Well, this is a win-win situation for customer like you and me because we now have the ability to have a conversation and get answers to our queries in a very much a contextual setting. Now, what is the issue with this? Specific to Google, which has more than 75% of its overall income coming through advertising. In this conversational AI, 
the questions the responses are all based on what you are specifically looking for in your own individual capacity so the advertisements that google can potentially show us have to be tailored according to specifically what we are looking for but unfortunately so far google has been coming up with advertisements based on who is bidding the most amount and that bid amount might not be a good metric to show ads in this kind of a conversational ai structure well microsoft can potentially implement chat gpt on its cloud and it can take to its corporate partners but Google's primarily revenue stream is coming from search and this conversational AI can kill one of its primary revenue streams. So everything is up in the air. So let's keep an eye out on this information. Also, I've made a video on what are the potential issues corresponding to this chat GPT and all the advanced AI models that we now have access to. Well, lots and lots of issues starting with biases in the models, data privacy concerns, the newness of the information so on and so forth please do go check out a few links that i'm giving in the description again and it will give you a good sense of how these ai models came into existence what are the issues with it and how companies are going to monetize on these models very 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 important topic this could be something which you might face in any interview right now the next story is about the financial crisis Three major banks have collapsed over the last one month. It started with SVB, then Signature Bank and finally Credit Suisse. The things that you need to know about this particular collapse are number one, that hey, all these banks have been in some or the other kind of issues over the last few years and last few months. Number one, SVB is in the startup space and startup space was going through a funding winter over the last one year. Number two, Signature Bank was having close to 20% of its deposits coming from the crypto space. Number three, Credit Suisse was paying a lot of fines over the last few years because of the regulatory and financial issues that it was facing. It was paying close to 500 million to a billion dollars of fines over the last few years. Now, the second thing that you also need to know is the increase in interest rates over the last few months had a massive impact on how these banks fundamentally operate. For example, in 2020 and 2021, there was a lot of free money available in the market. Governments printed excess money because, because of COVID and also they wanted everybody to have cash. And one of the primary destinations where this money ended up is with startups. And these startups went ahead and deposited all their money in SVB. What SVB did was they did not have a lot of people to take or give loans. So subsequently they invested in risk-free bonds and this risk-free bonds were giving them a return of one to two percent. Everything was good until 2022. In 2022 when the interest rates started to increase they had to pay more interest to the customers but the bonds that they went ahead and purchased in 2021 those interest rates were very low. So the rate of return that they had from these bonds were low, but they had to pay more money to these customers. Also, there was a funding winter, so a lot of people were withdrawing the money. This led to a lot of pressure on SVB and subsequently they had to break these bonds. And bonds are nothing but like your fixed deposits. You keep getting money, the interest, but if you break a fixed deposit in between, you have to pay the penalties. So these guys had to pay the penalties. And that was one of the reasons which led to panic and a lot of people taking out their money from SVB and leading to the collapse. Similar situation with Signature Bank and subsequently Credit Suisse. Sentiment has driven the market fear. The third thing that you need to know in this situation is the regulators and the governments were very proactive. They took a lot of actions over weekends SVB and Credit Suisse, the entire deals got concluded over the weekends so that this financial mess would not impact and would not spread into widespread fear and won't let down the stock markets overall. This was fantastic effort by the governments and the regulators around the world. If you want to learn more about these specific crises and how these collapses unraveled, I'm giving you the link to three videos. Please do go ahead, spend some time watching these videos. These are really important and will help you understand a lot more about the financial markets. And the final business story of 2023 is of course our favorite Adani group of companies. 
Gautam Adani was the third richest person before this entire Handenberg fiasco and now is between 25 and 30. And the market cap of Adani group of companies has dropped by 50% in two months because of Handenberg report. Now, what were the allegations that were coming out of the report? Number one is that there is a lot of stock price manipulation. The second allegation is these guys own more than 75% stake within their own companies and the government law mentions that no company should own more than 75% and the third rather not an allegation but a fact is that these guys have more debt compared to all their competitors and other industry players. Now over the last three months Adanis have now went into damage control mode. They conducted investment roadshows so that they can raise money and subsequently increase the investor confidence. Well, they raised 15,000 crores from GQG partners and that led to an increase in the investor confidence on Adani group of companies. Number two, they have also written back to Handenberg research report saying that, hey, all these allegations, we do not agree with them. Number three, the regulators have also started to dig deep into these conversations and subsequently they highlighted that now they will be a little more aware and they want to tighten the screws around all the companies going forward. If you want to learn more about the Adani group and also what was happening with respect to the Hindenburg reactions to Adani and Adani's response to Hindenburg, please go ahead, click on these videos. You will get a lot more information. Thank you so much guys for watching throughout and understanding what was happening in the first three months of 2023. If you have any questions, please do let me know and go ahead, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. As mentioned, it gives me a lot of motivation. Thank you so much. See you again. Bye-bye.